Hello guys, this is Roger69501 and welcome to my channel. Uh -huh. Well, uh, the Comic Dark Gono display is from 1987. Surprise, it's not from the 90s. Uh -huh. So this one is, like I said, from 1987, is uh, annual number one Superman to tame, uh, to tame a Titan. It's done by Bernie, Friends and Reedy. Uh, we see Superman here fighting a giant gorilla or monkey. Actually, it's more like a gorilla. Nice, nice cover. So, stay. Well, uh, I'm gonna give you my thoughts and review about this four, uh, four part uh, crossover. You know, the Superman books, uh, Krypton Return. Here's part one, which is Action Comics Annual number number two. Oh, wait, I need to put this thing here. Okay. Here's Action number two, Annual number two. Part two is Superboy issue number twenty-five. Not bad looking cover there. Uh, Supergirl issue number twenty-five. Number 25, which happens to be issue number 3, Cada Last Stand Against the Clones. Check that out. Pretty neat. And the last chapter, chapter 4, happens to be Superman issue number 25. My Enemy, My Father. It's a nice looking cover though. Check that out. So when you put all the covers together, it makes like a, a mini poster. Which, which, to be honest with you, looks pretty neat. It does look pretty neat. So, I've read it. It's a four-part story. And I would say that, well, like I said on my, on my, pre, on my preview video, where I mentioned if the story, if I don't like the story, the first half of the of the comic book, I don't like it. I am not gonna gonna read the rest of it. And I have to say that I read it all. Of it. And I have to say that I would say that is it's good. It's, I mean, it's a simple story. It's a timeline adventure story. That's what it is. So the story goes that hell here on. On this story arc, we get to find out that Hell, well, before that, uh, Krypton Return is actually the second part of the first crossover, uh, Hell on Earth. Now, the, I will advise, I will say that you actually, you do not need to read the first crossover, if you want to. I mean, you don't need to. If you know somebody that will borrow that that you can borrow from do it but to buy it uh, that is that if you want to uh, so the thing is that hell as what happened on hell on earth is that he wants to recreate planet crypto that's the whole thing it reminds me a little bit of of sword, uh, Sa on the Man of Steel mo movie that he wants to sacrifice planet Earth so he can rebuild Krypton. Well, the same thing wants to do Hell on the first on Hell of Earth. He was he wants to recreate Krypton by sacrificing humankind. So here on the first crossover, we see that we are not sure whether Supergirl fell in, fall in love with Hell. Well, here we get to find out that she actually fell fall in love with Hell. I know. So, but Hell, he was, he was man, he manipulated her, lied to her, cheated on her, you name it. He done it all to Supergirl on the first crossover. So here is the final confrontation between the Superman guys and Hell. 
So you see, the thing is that because hell he cannot uh, recreate Planet Crypto on the first crossover, here he decides to go through time to save Planet Crypto. But every time that he go through time, he will open like a parallel uh, time parallel or parallel time. It will rupture the timeline. So every time that he, he go to Planet Krypton, moments before it, yeah, that he will try to find a way to save Planet Krypton, he always failed. Because if, plan if Planet Krypton was destroyed, done by some Kryptonian, he can do it. Just go back in time, get the guy or the person that is responsible for destroying the planet, and things will be fine. Good. But in this case, no matter no no matter what he will do, he cannot never save planet Krypton because the planet itself got all it was time for the planet to to go boom. So it went boom. So every time that he go to time to the planet Krypton to try to save it, he rips the timeline another parallel timeline would open. So he would travel different time, different timeline at the same time, try to, to fix it, but he was failed, everything's failed. So, after issue number 24 in the Superman books, which I haven't read, we find that Superman, Superboy, and Supergirl end up in space, talking to that giant statue, uh, let's see if I can find it here. I think it's is on, is on this one that is called the, the, the Oracle. Let me see, I can find here a full page here. It's like, a, it's like a giant space statue. So, let's see, I can find it here. Actually, it's the one, uh, let me see if I can find it here. It's not here. I might see me here somewhere. Sorry, I'm taking too too long. But I'm not here somewhere. Yeah, but you know, it's on the last comic book. Yeah. I have to go through all of them. So. Yeah, I guess we can we can see it here. Actually, there is there is not a full picture of the statue of the Oracle. I know it had the same name of the Oracle as Barbara Gordon in the Birds of Prey back in the nineties. I guess I can show you his face here. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the best I can do. Check that. Out. So, what? This giant space statue does is that he's, he he makes Superman, Superboy, and Supergirl go to him because he has a mission for each one of them. So the thing is that Oracle sends Superman, Superboy, and Supergirl to three different timeline that has to do with the planet Krypton. Moments before the Clone Wars, the moment before. Uh, the planet explode and moment before something else. I'm sorry. So they have to go, they all, all three of them went at the same time and they arrived at the same time in three different timelines. Now each of those three time timeline they will confront Hale because he has the ability to go to go through time. He can go, he, he, I mean he was trying to be he was trying to be like three or four different timelines at the same time. And obviously you just can't. Maybe you, you can do it in the comic book world. Maybe he can do it but for a limited limited of time. And believe me, that uh, the character Hill, he's very powerful. I mean, I thought he was, he's going to be a wimp. <laughs> but he's not. He's pretty powerful though. He is, he is powerful, which I, was, which I was surprised. So that's the mission of the Superman, 
of the Chris uh, Superman. Also, we get to find out that we all know that Superboy is a clone. Well, the thing is that Hill, all the time he believed that he was a full-blooded Kryptonian. You know, he's the last of the last of the Kryptonian. You know, I'm 100% Kryptonian. Well, it happens to be that Hill is not Kryptonian at all. He is the same way as Superboy. Yep. He's a clone. The thing that he did, he did not know, knew about until he went one of the timelines to find out that he was a clone. He found out that he was a clone on the clone board. That was about, I don't know, about a hundred years before the destruction of Krypton. According, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> according to the story. Uh, let's see what else we get to see that Superboy he goes to another timeline the moment where moments before Krypton get destroyed he gets to meet Supergirl but Supergirl doesn't know that they know each other in some other timeline so he never told her what's the fate of the planet in a way and he never told her that they are that they are kind of like friends in some other timeline so let's see what else oh yeah we get to see that superman get to meet his father in some other timeline you see i mean that's the whole story you got three stories in one you got the story of supergirl on different timeline superboy and superman and it's pure science science in the sense of comic book story so Superman gets to meet his father, just right the mo although he was alive in some other timeline, but he knew the fate of the planet. So he was he knew that that Hill will show up in, in a specific moment with his son, which happens to be of Superman. So they battle uh, they battle Hill. Superman's father wants to kill him, uh, to kill Hill. He wants to. He can do it. I mean, he will. He will do it. But Superman would not let him. He would say, "There's another way to fix things, but without killing." I know it's kind of like. Con I know it's kind of doesn't make sense according to the movie Man Steel. Although after the movie came out, that people still uh, debate about the movie, about the fight scene where he gets about the buildings, how the fight scene, well, that's some other video. Anyway, so here we get to see that Superman, we get to see Superman as he is, that he do not kill. But his father, if he has to, he has to, as we can see here. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's a big battle. Eventually, they managed to, Superman managed to froze him and taught and, and frozen him in the core for such an amount of time but kind of like he destroyed himself so actually kill it and not kill it at the same time so he leaves Krypton we get to see here that then we go to Superboy uh, we can see here check that out Superboy well he dies he sacrificed himself whether he dies or not, well, I don't know because he's a clone. So I guess it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many times that he will die. If they just clone him back together, I guess. Because I do not read Superboy. Actually, the only Superman books I was reading was Superboy. Although I started reading this one, I bought from issue one to ten, and then I drop it after issue number ten. And then I, like I said on my previous video, thanks to Ardawi watching the Superman review, so kind of wake up my curiosity. Yeah, I have to say that it's, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not, the, it's not the greatest, but it's not that bad at all. So, Superboy dies, and we and eventually uh, heal, or hell, he dies. And Oracle, he's all happy. But, uh, 
that he that hell actually dies I don't think so eventually we're gonna see that he's gonna be back because he was in so many places in some different China at the same time that and the timeline is already being broken so that he might appear again oh yeah he will sometime in the I don't know some other story arc. so all in all it was a good story I'm not saying that you should go drop everything that you're doing to get this story arc I'm saying is that even though that I dropped the Superman about a year and a half ago after issue number 10 and then I start reading again actually my last issue that I bought about Superman was issue number 10 and this is the first one I bought of Superman issue 25 so we're talking about a year later a little bit uh, a little bit more than a, than a year it took me so <clears throat> I have to say that I finally understand the character Superman of the New 52. Well, Supergirl, I've been reading it since, since day one. Superboy, well, I don't, I never liked him back in the 90s. Maybe I have the first 10 issues or 20 issues of Superboy or first 15 issues and I got bored. Uh, Superboy is just, he's just annoying character. I don't know, something about him that I don't like, I don't know. So Superman World, like I said, I dropped it after issue number 10 and begin issue, reading issue number 25. So overall, it's a good story. It did what it's supposed to do, entertain me. And I, and I read all those four issues, one after the other. And it was a fun story. Simple, not, not too much complication. You don't need to know too many backstory. If you don't have the knowledge or the previous comic book is okay because because the story itself will give you a little bit of a background of the first crossover so they actually you don't need to if I had to compare the first crossover with this one I would say that this one is a lot better than Hell on Earth don't believe me. this one this crossover is a lot better than Hell on Earth so I would give it <clears throat> if, if this was a trade I mean, the whole story as, as a whole, I would give it four out of five. But because it was good. It was entertaining. The art is great. I like, I like the art on the Superman. Really like the art. Although I sometimes it's kind of hard for me to get used to all the panels. Because there are, there are pages where kind of like you have a lot, a lot of waste of, of space that they can use it to put more art. I don't know, that's just me. Uh, Super, uh, Supergirl's artist, uh, the same one. Real, real nice, check that out. And I, <clears throat> and I like the colors of this, of this issue. It's really nice. Superboy's art, well, it was okay. I would say it was a little bit dark for, for my taste. It reminds me of the cover of Forever Evil Arkham, Arkham War. So, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. This was a good story. And Action Comics Annual, this is done by... Uh, by Kenneth Roquefort and Clan and Dan Jurgens. Awesome. So I have to say that was really good. So, art-wise, although it's done by, by different artists, Obviously, you get to see that more or less the all the four books artists they try to maintain more or less the same styles uh, of the of the other books. So, so I have to say that is pretty good. Colors are great. The story you don't get bored. Although you gonna have some there there's some comic books there. I don't know which one is that you have a lot a lot of reading. Well, in my case, I like comic books that have a lot of weed because they are comic books that just have a few balloons and that's it well this one has a lot of weed and I like it in my case I didn't get bored I read, I read all of it it was a fun read 
What's a fun, fun, fun week? What's very entertaining? Well, guys, and I would say that if this was a trade, I would give the whole thing as a as a whole. I would give it uh, four out of five as a whole. Not in the, not uh, not on an individual comic book. As a whole, I would give it four out of five because it wasn't that bad at all. It was not that bad. It's not the greatest, but it was okay. So I like it. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you like this video. Till later.